And here is the Writer's Almanac for Sunday, July the 21st, 2019. The first train robbery in this country took place on this day, 1873. The James Gang held up the Rock Island Express in Adair, Iowa. It's the anniversary of the first Wild West showdown. It happened in Springfield, Missouri, 1865. Wild Bill Hickok got into an argument with a cowboy named Davis Tut. Argument had to do with a woman and a gambling debt. They decided to have a duel. They faced off in the street a distance of about 75 paces. They fired simultaneously. Tut's shot went wild, and Hickox hit Tut through the heart. And a few years later, a writer named George Ward Nichols wrote about it in Harper's new monthly magazine that made Wild Bill a household name throughout the country. It's the birthday of Ernest Hemingway, Oak Park, Illinois, 1899. He celebrated his 26th birthday in 1925 with his wife visiting Pamplona for the bullfight and the running of the bulls. Got there a few days early, and so he sat down to write a novel. He'd never written one before. He wrote in bed every morning, all week, kept on writing when they went back to Paris. He wrote in bars. He wrote in hotel rooms, finished the first draft two months later. And it turned out to be The Sun Also Rises. He sent it off to Scribner's, which published it in 1926, got a good review in the New York Times, and a bad review from Hemingway's mother, who wrote him and said, it is a doubtful honor to produce one of the filthiest books of the year. Every page fills me with a sick loathing. His second novel, A Farewell to Arms, followed three years later, and it became a bestseller. It sold 100,000 copies in its first year, and Hemingway was able to make a living writing fiction from then on. Born in the same year, 1899, on the same day, Hart Crane, born in Garrettsville, Ohio. His mother was a Chicago debutante. His father was a very successful candy manufacturer. By the time Crane was a teenager, he knew that he was gay. He moved off to New York, hung out with writers there, had a hard time making a living. He was an alcoholic, and at the age of 33, he jumped overboard on a steamship on his way from Mexico to New York. He died, leaving behind his masterpiece, The Bridge. It's the birthday of the poet Tess Gallagher, Port Angeles, Washington, 1943, who said, if poems are deep-sea diving, writing fiction is foraging. It's the birthday of the novelist and teacher John Gardner, born Batavia, New York, 1933. His third novel, Grendel, came out in 1971, the retelling of Beowulf from the viewpoint of the monster made his reputation. Here's a poem for today by Linda Paston, rereading Frost. Sometimes I think all the best poems have been written already, and no one has time to read them, so why try to write more? At other times, though, I remember how one flower in a meadow already full of flowers somehow adds to the general fireworks effect. As you get to the top of a hill in Colorado, say, in high summer, and just Look down at all that brimming color. I also try to convince myself that the smallest note of the smallest instrument in the band, the triangle, for instance, is important to the conductor who stands there pointing his finger in the direction of the percussions, demanding that one silvery ping. And I decide... Not to stop trying, at least not for a while. Though in truth, I'd rather just sit here reading how someone else has been acquainted with the night already and perfectly. 
a poem entitled Rereading Frost by Linda Paston from Queen of a Rainy Country, published by W.W. W. Norton and used by permission here on The Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch. <laughs>